Welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hey everyone, this year we're doing Black Friday all November long. Did you guys know about that? <gasps> That's Stop crazy. It, right? I don't think Nuts. we've ever done the whole month uh, of yeah, November. Yeah, I know. Never. And it's up to 30% off. 30% off, off. All of our favorite things. The stuff that Jess and our team is designing that we've just worked to the bone. Crystal lamps? Yeah. Marble, Marble collection? collection. Yep. Up to what? 30% off. That's pink candy dish? All month pink long. Pink candy dish. Yes. <gasps> that means you. the gifts you're going to give are... Nice. 30% off mm-hmm. for you're the most lucky part. Christmas yeah. list. I'll they're say. so lucky. Or your lucky house. Or your lucky house. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to give any of this away. Nope. You can keep it for yourself. Be selfish. So go to alicelanehome.com for 30% off all November. Up to 30%. Start yes. shopping. Boom. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dear Alice. I'm Jess Bennett. I'm Sue Hall. And I'm Corey Place. Awesome. Today, okay. we're going to be talking about our new showroom. You guys, this is so exciting. I keep calling it because Jess and Corey and McKinley is another designer that works for us that works closely with Jess. Um, they've been like back scenes. Like they go, they work on this building, you know, a few times a week, they go visit this building. It's like been the best kept secret. Not only like secret, tunnels. not only for you guys, yeah. for the state of Utah, mm. but even for like in the company, I feel like she's just been like quilting, quilting us <laughs> a, a building, you know, and she's going to gift it to us like, you know, during the holidays. And so we're so excited to kind of go into a deep dive. And I kind of, I wanted to do this just because I want, I want to know more about it too. Yeah. Like we're all like, Jess was really respectful because we all have our different departments. Um, but this is something that she's wanted for a long time. And I want you guys to hear the why I think it's such a, like Alice Lane in general is such a beautiful story of how it came to pass. She sold her home on Alice Lane to create the first store that we were in. That was obviously a remodel that was, we were renting that space. We got the opportunity to go up to trolley square, which is in downtown Salt Lake, which was such a dream, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's been a good, like we've grown so, so much. And it's been a good learning experience, but now we get to, she's birthing a baby <laughs> called the new Alice Lane. So I first wanted to just like ask Jess, like, just tell us, the, tell us the why behind all of this. And yeah. um, I think the why is because we've been renting for 14 years and we feel like we, we wanted to go, I mean, and there's several whys, there's so many whys, but we wanted to be able to own our own piece of land. We wanted to be able to own the building. We wanted to be able to own our future, right? Because every space mm-hmm. we go to, we fastly outgrow because you buy it for the moment that you're in, you know, it's like buying clothes mm-hmm. when you're beginning of your pregnancy, right? And then of course you're going to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what you're expected to do. And this business has been one of those things that's grown 18 heads and become something that, you know, a lot of people are like, so is this what you, is this what you had in mind when you thought you'd open this furniture store? Is this what you had in mind? And I was like, no, we are 115 (laughs) people big. Mm -hmm. Uh, What I had in mind was this little 4,000 square foot shop in, in Orem. And maybe there's five people, you know, (laughs) or something like that that can help service people. And it's just a cute little mom and pop boutique kind of thing. moment. Yeah, definitely. And then, you know, just like everybody, you start doing something and and it becomes really comfortable and then you're ready for the next challenge or you see something extraordinary that you want to take on. And we just keep growing with the opportunity and we have, uh, you know, grown into be this, this big operation, a huge portion of it. I'd say like 40 people or so work in our warehouse. Mm -hmm. Um, Our warehouse is 40,000 feet, but the front of its offices, we have accounting teams, Corey in special projects, mm-hmm. um, and product and product, yeah. product development. We've got our web team upstairs and then we've got this massive warehouse that looks like a Costco mm-hmm. <laughs> behind us. And, um, we store all of the things that we create as well as all of the clients, furniture and, um, stuff that we need to deliver. So it's just become this operation that it's amazing. And, and, you know, do our operations team and, you know, a really brilliant president has said, I still don't know if everybody in the state of Utah knows who we are or knows where we're at. And so I feel like if we were to put ourselves in Draper where this big furniture row is basically, so we've got an Ikea, which is the big anchor store. And then RC Willie is the second big anchor store. Mm-hmm. 
And then we've got all of like a mattress store and everything out there has to do with furnishings. And he's like millionaires shop at RC Welly. If we put ourselves next to them, I think people can find us. They'll know who we are. We'll be right in the middle of the state Mm -hmm. or, or of this, you know, I 15 corridor that everybody travels every day. And it's so big and right near the freeway. Like you can see Ikea from, you know, miles away. It's so massive. So we'll definitely be like the smallest little shop out there. Um, but I think the highest end for sure too. The Mm -hmm. highest end, the most beautiful. And I think people will be able to find us. It's going to be easier to get to also for the clients that we're servicing in Utah. Um, There's not a ton downtown where we've been at. And so to be really honest, the foot traffic is pretty minimal out there. We make our own business um, with the work that we're doing in the world, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter where we're at. Mm -hmm. So we felt like we'd have a better chance at being a retail store by putting ourselves somewhere where the parking lots are always full. Um, and Ikea's parking lot is always full. Um, same as our C Willie on a Saturday. And so we have, I don't remember 84 parking stalls in this new something like that space, which is amazing. (laughs) And we have enough room for everybody to work and for the teams to grow. So we have, um, about 30,000 square feet in total in this new building and we're coming from 14. So we're going to have more space for everybody. Mm. We know how we work. And so we're able to design the building for the workflow that we've developed, Mm. which is really, really cool to be able to be a designer and to design our space Mm. for the exact way that we know we work today because we've been doing it for 14 years. So we've never been more confident in this is how we work, which there's kind of an art and a rhythm to it, Mm. right? For sure. And there's so many different departments then they all work differently i was going to ask because we always talk about how hard it is to design for ourselves yes obviously allison has a brand you're like the queen of branding that's you got a degree in like branding and marketing Mm -hmm. um has it been hard to design this for yourself even though it's for a just this is a huge undertaking for sure has that been hard yeah for sure it's been paralyzing at you know a lot of moments there's things that I've wanted that I have I have like this great desire to do but then at the last minute do we dare do it like for instance in the showroom the ceilings um we painted this beautiful bluish gray color and I saw it at La Mercier, New York, this beautiful restaurant. And I just keep staring at that image and thinking it's what makes these high feel- ceilings feel a little bit more, I don't know, they just feel more aged and old and established. And it gives us more feeling of comfort instead of this bright white ceiling. Mm-hmm. And um, it just sort of gives us real charm and quality to it. And mm-hmm. um Anyway, and then there's like, you know, this hotel that we always stay at in um, Palm Springs called it's, it's the Rowan and it has these diagonally installed um, darker oak floors. And I was like, Oh, I have to do the floors on a bias. We have to do it. It looks so cool when it's not just, you know, laid straight Mm -hmm. and everything's on the grid. It just sort of feels like you can wander and dream. And even going into Kelly Wurstler's hotel, um, the proper in Santa Monica, her floors are laid in different directions on angles. And then they even octagonally, you know, lay in this formation and then they spit off again in another angle. And it's this sort of feeling of wandering Mm -hmm. that I just love where people's imaginations can kick in. So when they're thinking about their home, that they can kind of let their imaginations go and they can wander and they don't have to stay in the lines. They don't have to color in the lines, you know? So psychologically, there's just like a couple of things that I was like, Oh, do we dare do it? Or should we color, should we, should we color in straight lines or should we do these things that we dare to do? And I've never been more insecure than, than just telling a client to do it Mm -hmm. because I know it's going to be extraordinary in the client's home. And I have all of this distance because it's not inside my head, but when it's inside your head, it's like, it's like anything, right? Like it's like getting dressed or anything else where you're like, I don't know, does this work? You know? And yep. so it's and you're paying for it too. So it becomes emotional, right? You know, yeah. like, is this the right decision? It just means too much. Yeah, Everything just means way too much. And so it's paralyzing. So it's nice to be able to have, you know, Corey working on it. Corey knows a ton about construction and he's really managing this special project of ours with the builder. Mm-hmm. I was kind of checked out, um, in some ways, um, he's in yeah. it, but he's, he's not as, we're not on the front burner for him. Yeah. Yeah. There so you go. There and are and some... we are on our own front burner for us Yes, and, and it's the front burner for Corey and for me and, you know, McKinley who's working on it with us. And so, and we're designers, so we know too much cause we build houses for a living and remodel them. So 
we're just like seeing if something gets dropped where most clients probably wouldn't know. So Ooh. that's also probably something that we're like, ah, yeah. Which yeah. probably honestly the builder doesn't love because we'll go through walkthroughs and be like, this isn't right. This, this should have been done this way. And they're like, <laughs> okay. I th think they're probably used to like building for other people who don't know. So they yeah, can kind of yeah, pull the wool like over a... their eyes a little bit, but uh -huh. yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, but it's, it's a dream doing this is a dream. And of course we're recording this podcast before we're in it. And so this will come out once we finally move in and I'm excited to experience that day. I think about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like what's it going to be like to just walk these hallways and work this way and have larger desks for the designers and the design, different design departments that we have there and private offices for the managers. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. just a bigger kitchen with multiple microwaves, multiple refrigerators for the break room. And, you know, it's just all the things that we've learned about ourselves. Too many bathrooms, you know, so that the bathrooms are never full. Because <laughs> right now, guys, we have two for like all departments and the customers. So yeah. you bet those pain points, it's kind of nice because you know how you live. Yeah. You know, just like when we do homes, you kind of know how we work. And so you know how to correct. Yep. And like make the ideal scenario. Yeah. Here's a question for you. I want you to tell us about the building. Will you tell me about the building? I don't know if you want to start with the yeah. inspiration. You kind of mentioned some of these these yeah. moments that you've captured in your phone and on your travels. Yeah. Uh, but then I want to see how that like has, has translated and like the feeling that you feel now that you guys get to walk through the building once a week and like really see it come to life. Yeah. I want to know like what space, like the light hits you just the right way. Definitely. And like what, what, and because it's, it, I've walked through it, you know, a couple of times, but it is different than what we've experienced. So it's, it's going to be fun for you guys to realize Allison in a new way. And I want just to, expand on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I have to tell you, I mean, we're sitting at the store that we could basically be done any, like really any week now, yeah. right? We're just waiting yep. for cabinetry. And so when you walk in right now in the construction site, the hardwood floors are laid, the space is painted. Um, doors are in doors are in. Yeah. Like you really are experiencing like almost a finished space. And I just can't even believe it's ours when I walk in, I'm just so overwhelmed by how much I love it. Like I love it. It's so beautiful to me and I can't wait to see it dressed. I think furniture is going to lay in it. So, so pretty. Um, we have, well, one of the things that we learned about ourselves is that we have in our current showroom, two massive windows in the front of our store, any scene, that we set in there, if it's a bedroom, if it's a dining room, whatever we put in those front two scenes sell really, really well. Mm -hmm. Something about the natural light and the feeling in those rooms mm -hmm. makes everything look amazing. And so we were like in this new spot, we need to have windows across the entire building. So every scene has windows in it. Mm -hmm. And also they fold it photograph more beautifully. So that was one thing that we knew for certain about ourselves. And then for the exteriors, I've been staring at, you know, just like favorite favorite places, just like if any of you were to build a home um, or to help a best friend with a home that you would start to pin on Pinterest, all of your favorite, favorite spots, and then find the commonalities and then share all of these parts for the interior and the exterior with your architect, which is exactly what we did. We had beautiful folders put together for him so that he understood we had him walk our space. So he knew what was right about it and also what was not right about it which the biggest pain point is just not enough space. So we were able to solve for that in this new building. And it was just such a thrill to get to work with him on exactly what we wanted. And then the exteriors, again, I loved the exterior of La Mercier. Um, one of the things that we see in like beautiful big cities, um, urban developments is that there's stores on the bottom and residences on top. And so we wanted the lower portion to be painted a dark color because that's what I kept seeing in New York and London and everywhere else. All the stores were navy or black or something like that. And then the upper portion was like a whole different material, maybe brick or or it's white up top if it's stucco. Um, but it felt like the money was in the lower half. And so we divided up the upstairs, which is 11,000 square feet. And to be really honest, empty, mm -hmm. we don't even know what we're going to do with it, but what a great problem to have extra space. Um, and then the lower half is 20,000 square feet where we've painted that exterior Navy blue, which is, you know, our, our color, it's kind of this dark peacocky Navy with a little green in it. Yeah. Super pretty. I and, think, oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, that's one thing that I love most about the building is the dichotomy between like, obviously we need 
30,000 square feet, right? But mm-hmm. how do we make it feel, and it's a commercial building, but how do we make it feel, you know, warm and cozy and personal, but then also residential? Cause those are the, that's what we're featuring in it is residential right. furniture. And it's been really challenging with the city because city codes these days have different codes for commercial versus residential. And they're really stern on commercial stuff. Um, because you have to be accessible to everyone. Right. So, um, I feel like we've done, done a really good job at like balancing that and trying to make our showroom represent who we are and what we do in the residential space while being a commercial building. So totally great job for you and McKinley. It's a great, it's a really great point. And, you know, it is, I think that's one of the challenges too, for this builder or any builder is that even though it's commercial and he's used to building gas stations and things like that, it's finished fully residentially, Mm -hmm. you know, so big, big, beautiful finish work, um, you know, which is definitely, they're used to doing rubber base molds, you know, so we've got finished work everywhere and big, beautiful base molds and lots of cabinetry and lots of paint changes and yeah. you know there's moldings just, like even on the exterior of the building that yeah, yeah so. back of house is carpet tile um so that it's quieter with acoustic ceiling self-absorb sound which is something that we've never had before so and i have to say one of the things i'm super surprised about is this is funny to mention on the podcast but for the fluorescent lights that are in those you know troughers they are so beautiful. Yeah. The Kelvin in them, it's super, super low. Mm-hmm. Right. And yep. they look amazing. It's just really warm and comfortable. So, so we're able to choose every little detail, you know, yeah. which is super fun. And, yeah. and also to get educated more on all of those things like fluorescent lights that we never have to choose. So mm-hmm. anyway, really beautiful. Um, the Chloe store in New York or London, I forget where this is. Um, we chose those exact same front doors for our front doors. And then, um, on the, on the cover of, um, Oh, let's see on guild, the store in New York that shares the same building with Le Mercier. Um, they have this beautiful set of front doors that are Navy with gold, um, branding on each of the doors. So we'll be doing something like that. So we've just kind of taken like all of the favorite stores, um, Mackenzie Childs has an amazing store. We, we took a piece of that architecture for ours where we divide the dark from the light mm-hmm. on our building with mm-hmm. some really big, beautiful, um, is it called Ephus, the molding? Yep. Yeah. So pretty. Mm-hmm. It's so, so pretty. They're able to sculpt out the shapes of these moldings with foam. Foam? Yep. Yeah. And then they plaster over the top. Chicken wire and plaster and... Yep. All sorts of business. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's just beautiful. It's been such a thrill every part of the way. So we're kind of sitting at maybe four weeks from being in. Yep. Um, but by the time this podcast out comes out, we will be in and um, excited to share this so we can talk um, more. So people that are interested in the building will know mm-hmm. everything they want to know. know. On the interior, especially like the showroom, which is like, if you do come to Utah, please come by. Um, but what will you experience versus what you have had? That's a really good question. We have just a little bit more square square footage in the showroom portion. Like we said, almost every scene is bathed in natural light. One of the things that we never had before were mantles mm. so that we could show clients how to style their mantles. So we have three mantles um, with like faux fireplaces in them so that we can show them how to style um, we've got a photo studio in the new building, which also um, kind of um, moonlights as a show, another showroom space mm-hmm. as two groupings in it. So we can shoot our lookbooks in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, any scenes that we want for our web banners or I don't know, there's just so much photography that goes in mm-hmm. to um, having a store, but also having a website. So that was really fun. We learned about that, that we wanted that during the pandemic, Uh, Our store was closed. Um, It was by appointment only. And so really there was just like our floor stylists that worked there and the store manager and they would help people that would come in. And some people still worked in the back and other people worked virtually. Mm -hmm. But what we learned was we could take pictures all day long and style things and shoot them and style things and shoot them. And it was like uninterrupted. And we were like, we should really have an area that we could pull a drape on, you know, Mm -hmm. just closed so people know that it's in session and have a photo studio room. It's, it's part of the showroom. So we're super excited about that too. 
And then the showroom kitchen as well, which we've never had. And oh, then this yeah. is, this will be a game changer. Gosh, how did I forget? Oh. That? Yeah. So yeah. I I mean, like typically yeah. we take most of when we do that, we either do it in a you know a house that we're shooting or your house mm-hmm. a lot of the time. So it'll be nice to kind of have that. Yeah. Where the product is and totally. We have, that. we're calling it the fancy kitchen. So in the fancy kitchen, we're going to have, we actually have a real stove, real refrigerators. Um, the whole, we can't plug in the stern stove because the fire marshal yeah. won't let us plug it in. Yeah. That's the commercial code that we're running into. It's so like yes. he's not going to get any warm cookies when he <laughs> comes through the door. <laughs> exactly. I dream of Louise. having cookie smells in the <laughs> showroom. It's I know. such a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, our marketing team was like, Jess, you have to go to RH because we um, spent Christmas in Chicago the last year you have to go to RH in Chicago and one of the things I learned from going in there was they had this massive skylight over their um, restaurant that's in the middle of the building oh my gosh I came back and I was like we have to have a skylight in our yeah. building like this big old New York skylight and it's over the cash wrap it's big how big is it how many feet Do you I think it's like 18 it's like 14 12 or 14 by 18 feet Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's gigantic. And honestly, it's made, that's the biggest difference in the showroom. I think Mm -hmm. had we not done that, we totally would have regretted it. And we wouldn't even actually known what we regretted because after it went in, I was like, holy smokes, like that really does make the showroom. And it makes the entrance. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you walk through the vestibule, it's like, yeah, it's over the front desk and over, it's kind of a two story section of the showroom. And it's painted um, the back wall. It, it has a brand on it. It's like plastered navy blue with big brass letters. And that skylight just bathes that whole plaster wall in natural light. And we've going to put um, natural or real trees on both sides of the cash wrap growing up towards the light. So you I think s- it's going to be a moment. I can't Ooh. wait. A moment. You want to know something yeah. that I just like realized, like thinking about just the evolution of Alsane is that you, the guy that will be plastering Tyler mm-hmm. Hunsinger, he's an artist he'll be plastering that back wall, right? Yep. Your walls. When I first started working with you, we had a back wall mm-hmm. in the old Alice in it, Orem. Yeah. It was cobalt blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's obviously evolved to this inky peacocky blue, but like Ty- that's when I met Tyler. Like, anyway, I just love that. Like you've, we've collected these people, yeah. these artists and these friends and stuff. And not only has, did he do the one in Orem, like the very first Alice Lane, and he plastered that blue and like all these other special things. And he did that same thing in trolley, mm-hmm. you know, and he does our projects too. He's wonderful. And he's, we carry his art, but he did our blue walls and trolley. And then he gets to do this like massive one on the building that you own, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. what a cool, I don't know. I just love that that little thread has like carried through all the spaces that we've occupied. Totally. And I love that. Yeah. So, so wonderful. And I think that's one of the great things about any designer is their resources. Yeah. You know, their Rolodex, just all the connections that they've made. And they've got a guy that can do anything mm-hmm. or a girl, you know? Yeah. We've and you got know, a, our uh, custom guy that does any range hood, you know, cause you just can't find any range hood. So yeah, we've got a person for everything, a paper hanger, a drapery maker, a electrician. Uh huh. It doesn't grumble. Yep. <laughs> yeah. A bread maker, a I pipe. Know. I'm just kidding. I know. But we can really like do anything with the people in our phones mm-hmm. over the years of just being curious and forming these friendships and they're always willing to say yes for our projects because we treat each other well. And so, yeah, we wanted to involve them as much as we can. Our favorite electrician is coming in after the fact, even though we had a different electrician for the build, we want him to come in and do us and hang, hang our chandeliers from our current showroom in that chandel in, in that showroom. And he's going to be doing a lot of aftermarket stuff for us too. So, Yeah. So fun. Yeah. Yeah. One thing too, when I walked through with you, the, the, one of the biggest differences I felt is that in a lot of like stores, you have like these big, massive open spaces and you create rooms with the furniture groupings, right? That's right. what we do at our own space. You have a couple corridors or columns to kind of divide, but in this new space, like you really do it, even though the square footage for the showroom isn't like exponentially different than what we currently have. It feels different Mm -hmm. because you have divided the space. So interestingly, will you talk a little bit about that and kind of the experience of like those vignettes and what you've for sure envisioned? Yeah. Yeah, I think we wanted to have people experience this way. They'd experience their own home because you can relate better to that than just to seeing a sea of furniture Mm -hmm. and the overwhelm that hits you when you walk into a furniture showroom. That's like that. They, sometimes they try and create themes like, 
I don't know how many of you have walked through RC Willie before and heard like crickets chirping in the outdoor Shut area. Ooh. Shut your mouth. Or yeah, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. they really do. Jazz band over there. <laughs> yeah, like the they corner. have different sounds yeah. pumping through so in funny. different places to try and give you that feeling. But we didn't want to do it with sound effects. We wanted to to do it just like so that you could fully experience with architecture. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So there is there's a lot of really great interior architecture. Um, large columns sometimes divide the space by column. It's just like a 24 by 24 inch right column yep. that comes yep. down with finished work on it. And we've learned that we love to hang art on those columns, um, smaller pieces. And we've got, of course, fireplaces on walls. And um, yeah, you'll just experience a room the very same way that you would in a home. So it's just like truly the most residential experience that you can have. And I love that too, because how often do we go into a showroom and you feel like you're, you kind of go in and try and find the exit out. Cause you're just oh. like, people are staring at me. These are big purchase decisions. Yeah. Like how do I experience this? Like, well, he's trying to like sell me on something. Anyway, I like envision when I walked it through, walked through the building with you and envisioned our customer, like going into these spaces, like you could really like sit down and like feel mm -hmm. a space. I know that there's been moments at market where like the, what was it? The Milan apartment that Lillian August yeah. made that was just kind of like tucked away. And we sat down and we're just like, we'd have the best conversations in a space like oh this. My gosh, yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Yeah. Like just these like moments, like when you're making these big decisions, emotional decisions mm -hmm. that you're not having someone necessarily stare you, mm -hmm. stare at you while you're making these. And like, what a beautiful experience for the customer totally. to walk through and like feel, I don't know, feel that lifestyle and feel mm -hmm. that luxury. Right. Definitely. So I yeah. love that. Yeah. It's beautiful. And we've, we've built little, um, tiny built-ins, um, in certain sections so that, you know, if you, if you, we kind of have this way of thinking, if, if you see a beautiful bed made, like, mm -hmm. let's say that's the cake and you want all the ingredients are nearby in a built-in so that you don't feel like you have to strip the bed to be able to have that bedding. You've got everything right there. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of scenarios like that where you can experience something, but then it's right there so you can grab it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind like, of the opposite of RH where you experience it, but you can't take anything home. Sorry. You have to get on the catalog and order it and we Hands off. It. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah, we're definitely a retail store where you can shop it. You can hunt it, kill it and bring it home. That's my favorite kind. Yeah. Yep. And like a measure, like I feel like this, when you talk about all these like processes and like ways to shop, it's like measure 50 times yeah. at once. Like yeah. you've, you've dreamed of this, Yeah. which is so cool. How has sure. the process been? The process has been um, long, I'd yeah. say, but um, when did you start even like Jamie for sure, like looking for real estate? Like, how long has this like process been? I just want like listeners to know that like these things like, yeah, you know, it I takes would say time. at least 2017. Yeah, it was you probably started was looking for land fall winter of 2017. So I think it was like November okay. is when I started looking. So it was um, like such a surreal thing because there's only so much land. And so you're trying to think, you know, you only know what you know. So you're thinking about yeah. the things that you know, and you're not thinking outside of what you know too much. And so when this idea, you know, at least a year or two later came up that this one spot was left in this, you know, area that Ikea actually owned that whole campus and there was one spot left and it was on this little island of land. So it's not next to everything. It kind of floats in the middle. Um, you know, our president who, who does a lot with real estate was like, I think this is, I think this is where we should go. And I was like, what, what are you crazy? We're going to look like a Chanel store in the middle of a mall. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. And he was like, no, it does make sense because people can find us because they're coming here to make these decisions anyway. And he was like, let's just go in Ikea and let's go upstairs. Let's eat some Swedish meatballs and let's stare out like the window and look at the land. And so we rode the elevator, the escalators up got some Swedish meatballs. Cause I remembered my little Jane loving them and I'd never tried them. And I was like, I need to just see if these are any good. So we sat there and we ate Ikea food How and were we they? stared over it. They were flavorless. So, <laughs> oh, dang. so bring that hot sauce in your bag that Beyonce was talking about. Yeah. Um, you're going to need some salt and pepper for those, but, um, good for kids, right? Cause kids like everything right. bland. So your kids are going to love them anyway. So yeah, we just sort of stared at the, the land and just thought about it. And he was a hundred percent felt amazing about it. Best real estate decision we could make for our money. And, um, I think some of us had question marks in our heads. I was one that had like four question marks in my head about it, but I just had to trust because 
I know him and I know that everything that he said that we should do so far, he's been a hundred percent, right. 110% right. Like he's never steered us wrong. And so honestly we bought the land and we started working with an architect 2019, right? 2018. We, we started working with oh, the yeah. architect in 18. I know we bought the land in 18. Yeah. It was like either the end of, uh, that was like the end of 18 that we started working yeah. with the architect. So crazy. Yeah. yeah. And we actually found like, we found the lot for sale uh, a year before we like committed to doing it. Cause we're like, okay, this is an option, yeah. but we're going to see like kind of maybe what's closer. Yeah. Cause when you're buying a retail plot for your business, you have to think of what you're next to, or, you know, mm-hmm. like location is, is really key. Uh, so Draper is good. Cause it kind of splits Utah and Salt Lake mm-hmm. County. Um, but we, liked being downtown. So, um, we realized that buildings that were built that are built downtown were built a long time ago. Therefore they weren't the square footage we needed. So also they use things like boilers to heat and cool their yes. building. Like we've had at Charlie square and sometimes they Cutting. don't, they don't work. And also we came back to 2022 and we had a flood and ruined hundred thousand dollars in furniture, our floors, we had to rip our showroom off to the studs in certain areas and put our showroom back together. And that was just like the beginning of this year, you Ooh, know? Yeah. So yeah, it's been really undependable and ha- finding people that can fix a boiler in 2022 is not very common. So it's hard to be able to get multiple opinions on the right things to do. And anyway, it's been expensive also to yes. work with a boiler. So I just keep saying to the girls, Guys, one of these days we're going to move in and we're going to have heat and air conditioning that's reliable. Lots of bathrooms. You won't have lots to of, yeah. you won't have to bring uh, fans to cool yourselves mm-hmm. off with or lots of blankets or mm-hmm. we have everybody has a space heater at their desk currently as we work. Mm-hmm. So it's been wild working in, you know, a, a building that's probably at least a century old. Yeah. Charming as heck. Nothing's more charming than our space. I'm yeah. going to miss our window sills and certain things about it, but um the new shop is we've taken, I think the best things with us, all the learnings of the charm of the old building and put them into this building and we'll have modern systems that work, which is going to be so great. Yeah, and nice. bonus for Sue and I and Corey, if you ever come up a much shorter commute too. Yeah. And we great. have our, just gave me an office. We all have our own offices. Oh, own F, own that's spots. so exciting. I know it's going to be so, it's such a great way to work. Yeah. And you, yeah. and also one cool thing, I, again, I work with the design center and we have our own entrance for our clients to come in and she's given us lots of conference rooms and spaces to just like sit and dream and think about your homes. And anyway, it really is such a, like, it's the best secret gift. Mm-hmm. like secret sister gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a library but, that's twice as big for both the clientele that shop there and a huge library for the design staff in the back. We haven't been like keeping this a secret for like intentionally. Mm-mm. I don't think, right. It's just kind of happened that way. Cause I think it took us <laughs> yeah. so long to do yeah. everything, finding the land, getting it under contract, working with the city that it's just kind of been like a, we're just going to chug along while we can and maybe, yeah. Yeah you know what I mean? Not say anything until we know it's for sure. And then Mm -hmm. we've just been like, had our heads buried in the sand, like getting it done that we've just haven't come up for air yet, you know? For sure. So yeah, it wasn't intentional. Yeah. Oh, I know that. I know that. But it's it's like, now that it's here, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like you guys have been busy, especially when you walk through, you're just like, good gravy. This is really remarkable. (laughs) Yeah. It's really remarkable. And it is such a gift. I feel like not only like to your employees and to just like the way we work and such great consideration, on all departments, like, cause there's so many, there's mm-hmm. so many moving parts to this machine. You guys, it's wild. Mm-hmm. It's wild. It's wild. It's been, it's been fun to be a bystander to like watch, watch how they worked and just watch how the company has grown. But it just really is. It's such a love note from Jess, I think to not only her employees, but to you guys as, as patrons and people that are trying to dream up your own house. And I often say this, that like Allison, I feel like was one of the first transitional marks in Utah. I feel like Jess was truly a pioneer in leading that march out of the Tuscan phase of Uh yesteryear and how grateful we are. And anyway, I'm just so excited that we're going to have this edifice that is Alice Lane Mm -hmm. that's owned by Alice Lane. That was created by Jess, like for everyone. Yeah. I think it's, it's such a beautiful thing. 
So, mm-hmm. And anyway. there's something really lovely about not being connected to a mall. We get to sort of make our own hours. We can make our own sales. You know, we were trying to do a store closing sale just recently. We were just selling off a lot of excess furniture and whatnot. And the mall sort of shut us down Ooh. and said, you're not allowed to say store closing or that you're moving or, and we're like, Oh, we had no idea. Cause it would make the mall look less successful. Oh, and we're like, Oh no, we're not going under or anything like that. It's not like yeah. it's, it's not like that. It's just that we're, we're, you know, moving to a new location. And so of course we have stuff that we yeah. don't want to bring with us just like when everybody moves. Mm. So yeah, it'll just be nice to be able to be our own sheriff, you know, yeah. yeah. O- operate the way we want to. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So yeah, that'll be, that'll be great. It'll be, revolutionary for totally. our business. Yeah. Yeah. We could close the doors and have a rave on the oh, inside. You betcha. It'd be so fun. Yeah. You betcha. Yeah. Um, do you have any last thoughts, you know, for, I don't know, just for the listeners on when they come to Utah, hopefully you all come to visit us here in Salt Lake and Draper. Um, yeah. but just, I don't for know, sure. or just any last thoughts on just like what this has meant to you? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's a really great question. It's surreal for sure. Um, going in there and, um, you know, I haven't seen it dressed yet, but it's just so beautiful and it means so, so much to me. I'm sure like a lot of you that have ever built your own home or even remodeled it and experienced the finished product. It's just, I would hope that most of you get to say it's better than you even imagined. Cause that's, that's definitely how I feel. I don't know, Corey, how you feel, but like every single bathroom, I think we have five bathrooms, seven Oh, we have seven bathrooms. Every single one Thank of them you. is is a different design. So you'll experience something different, different tile, different wallpaper. They're just, everything, nothing's been phoned in. So you're going to have a beautiful experience no matter what. One of my guilty pleasures is going into any bathroom um, in a public space, a beautiful hotel. It's always such a treat to see how gorgeous these bathrooms can be and what a lovely experience that that is for people to have um, just like a moment to themselves. I even just in the middle of the day, like to go into our bathroom and just wash my hands, you know, and just like, I don't know, it's like taking a quick shower. You all of a sudden can think better. You know, you're like, I had a great idea in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> As, it's just like a way of like cleansing whatever's in your mind. Always done and, that. I remember even like back in Ormy, be like, yeah, just go in there, wash, like fill the warm water and like, it'll come to you. Yeah, yeah, totally. So anyway, we've just got all these gorgeous restrooms. Even every mm. little detail has been thought out. Every faucet's different. Every, every moment of it is like a different experience. And so I'm just excited for the public to be able to have you know, their own moments and to experience a showroom like this. I will tell you, I just went to California two weeks ago with my husband for my birthday. And I want the funny thing I wanted to do is go through furniture showrooms, which isn't very much of a rest from my furniture life. And, um, just experience how showrooms are laid out and, and how their things are displayed and just like the magic of each showroom. Mm-hmm. And I came back and I had to tell our floor stylist, I was like, I didn't go in a showroom that I was amazed by the way that I feel amazed by Alice Lane when I walk in mm-hmm. and I don't know how we did it. I don't know how it came to be, but it's honestly one of the most beautiful styled and um, curated spaces to be able to experience. And um, just like, the smells. I will tell you, I've been working on four different playlists right now so that we can almost have one for every day of the week for the new store, you know, the music when it's good and it's like at the right volume and, um, just like the visuals when they're just right. We're working really, really hard on that. And we've got furniture we've been waiting on in our warehouse for a long time now for the new showroom. And, um, yeah, just every single part of it is, really, really well thought out. And we took a lot of time to think about it too. Yeah. I yeah. feel like, I mean, like we said, it's almost been five years mm-hmm. that we've been working on this project mm-hmm. and it's been, we started construction November of 2021. So in a really hard time. Rough. Yeah. In fact, so. this is a fun fact. We, the bids that we were given for the building would have been in 2020. Yep. By the time we broke through all of the different layers with the city of Draper, which was the, arguably the most hard city to do anything in. Yes. It was so difficult. The price of the building doubled and we hadn't even broken ground yet. And we had already bought the land. So we were. And the, and we'd already there. worked with the architect painstakingly for years. And like, it was just like, so such a major bummer to 
to have experienced that, which so many of you have, if you're building in this market, it's just not the same as it was even, you know, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I think I've heard from somebody recently that's building and they say that their bids are coming back lower now than when they originally bid. And I'm like, so lucky for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Hold yeah. on to that moment and that feeling. Cause Lock it in. that's a good one. And you know, we've, we've yeah. been working with clients yeah. during this whole process where we've seen their furniture budget dwindle during their build because the build is just taking so much of their money. Yeah. Things are so Twice expensive. Yeah. And it has it's to crazy. come, it has to come from somewhere. And one of the things that I, I think I'm really good at, uh, but I kind of sometimes wish I wasn't is making things work within a budget, like finding a different way to do things uh -huh. or, you know, getting the same aesthetic in a different way type of thing. So the constraints we've had with availability on building materials or products, mm -hmm. and then also fitting that within a budget has been really hard. So I'm like, very proud of what we've accomplished because it's yeah. still, it's honestly, it's an amazing showroom. Uh, and for me, it's like even more of that. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's definitely been like an emotional thing. Has it for you? Yeah, for yeah. sure. So it's, it's like, well, you just feel all of it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and as you work through your own project, you, f you really feel so much emotion for every little decision that you're making and you sweat, you sweat over it. you, you dream about it. I know McKinley woke up in the middle of the night on the weekend, one weekend she goes, oh, I think I forgot to put outlets in the whole showroom. Yeah. She sat up in bed. She opened up her phone. She was zooming in on her phone and every single way. And she was like, it's true. That nightmare's true. I forgot to put outlets in the whole showroom. And we had just finished drywall. Drywall was like just that, like the Sunday before it was like yeah. done. So we figured out a way to do it. Again, that's like one of those, like, you know, being scrappy type of. We did a change order moments. and yeah. spent a lot of money and we figured out a way to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, but human error, I think that that's it. good. Yeah. I, I mean, understand. it's like, it's in everything we're doing right now. It's in our dreams. It's in our every thought for sure for Corey. I mean, like little funny things like our vestibules walking into the building. There's a front door, mm -hmm. a vestibule, and then another door. And in Utah, it's nice because it kind of traps the cold air. Um, you know, the snow drifts, anything like that. So in, in the current vestibules in Charlie square, they're glass, they're framed out, but then they have glass and we couldn't have the glass. We couldn't have the transparency because the price of glass is so astronomical right now. So Corey was like, there's just going to have to be sheet rocked, but we'll do any kind of finished work you want. Finished work right now, a finished wall and, sh and finished work is going to be way less expensive than glass in this current market that we're in. So we were like, okay, we'll pivot. We'll come up with finished work ideas. And Corey even was like, we can't get a finished worker there right now to the site. So I'll go do the finished work myself. So bless him. Yeah. He went and finished worked bathrooms for us. And, and both vestibules. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, that's kind of a fun little postcard that as we walk through there, I'm always going to think about Corey and his sacrifice to go and do that. But anyway, yeah, we've just been pivoting. We've been learning a lot about the market that we're in. And I think it's made us really sympathetic for what our clients are experiencing. I feel like we're pretty empathetic people anyway, yeah. but yeah, it's Heavy. just, it's just like a different dimension that you kind of experience for yourself. But, um, yeah, it's been a joy and, and it's been an absolute joy to be able to walk through it. And we've got every little, um, grouping figured out where all the art's going to hang everything. I just mm -hmm. can't wait to get her in and get it in and get her all dressed for her big coming out party. It's going to be such, Debutante. such a beautiful thing. And to really get to spend the rest of our days there because Alice Lane, like we talked about has been in two locations already. We haven't, at one point we had two stores open. Um, and now we just have one store. We had rebranded a, a store down in a different area and, um, it just didn't, it just didn't make sense to be there and somebody wanted our lease and, and we were like, you know what? Yeah, we can walk away from that. So we've just have the one store, but we've kind of moved around a couple of different places and I feel like Goldilocks and like this one is going to, this one fits yeah. Yeah. just right. We haven't even been there yet, but I just, mm -hmm. I can feel it in my bones that this is, this is like our final resting place. So I'm really happy to have that open, have the room to grow and um, to have a really amazing work experience for the people that work there, as well as the people that shop there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. well, we're all so excited. What do you got? Oh, I was just going to say the next one will be a separate location 
elsewhere. <laughs> yes. Manifestation. That's yeah. yeah. Yes, so. definitely. Texas, we're coming for you. Dallas, do you hear <laughs> us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. California keeps telling us they want us to come there too. I so know. we actually have no plans, but Dallas has told us they want us and we kind of want Dallas too. Yeah. We yeah. do some work in Dallas. I'm into and Dallas. Yeah, quite Dallas like cool. it. I do quite like Dallas. I'm Dallas a Cowboys so fan, so. Yep. I know all of us are like, we'll go. Yeah. I'll go. I'll do it. Tom signed up. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> um, well, we're so excited. Thank you guys again, like for just spilling the beans on all the details, the pains, the, yeah. I don't know, everybody just like get excited. Their grand opening should be, do we know timelines yet? It's going to be fall of 2022. Okay. So somewhere in okay. the fall. Yeah. Is that accurate? For certain. It was supposed to be October. I think it's going to end up being early November now. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. In November, it's yeah. for sure going to be in November. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it looks like you could set up shop right now. So there's really nothing that can stop it. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Yeah. Nothing that I can know. stop this, <laughs> this stone from rolling at this Q point. Queen. So. Don't stop me now. Yeah, okay. that's right. Well, <laughs> exactly. Well, awesome. Thanks so much for listening guys. And we will catch you next time. We design homes all day, every day, and we get to dream about these spaces, space plan them, work with clients. We want everyone to be able to have this opportunity. So we've created a team called our Home Furnishings Design Team, and they will help you complementary space plan, help furnish, accessorize, and really create the spaces you've been dreaming of for years. Um, The service is complimentary, which is amazing. Um, And all you have to do is sign up on our website at alicelanehome.com. Um, You'll select Home Furnishings Design Services and sign up for a free consultation. Or you can just call us at 800-423-7757 or email us at designrequests at alicelanehome.com. We're so excited to work with you. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 